Hello, everyone, and welcome to an episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm Ryan Chacon, and we have a very special episode for you today. We have two guests, Mike Stonebreaker, the founder and CTO of Hapara, and Gant Redman, the CEO of Hapara. Uh, they are a next-gen data visualization app creator company. Um, and the reason this episode is so special is because Mike Stonebreaker is actually a Turing Award winner, which is basically the Nobel Prize for computing. Um, very, very cool kind of conversation we get to have today, focused on what data visualization is, why it's important to delivering our ROI in IoT and what the future of the space looks like. So really think you're going to get a lot of value out of this, um, but please be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you get the latest episodes as soon as they're out. But other than that, enjoy the episode. Welcome Mike and Gant to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, it's great to have both of you. Looking forward to this conversation. Um, let's kick it off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself and, uh, and the company for our audience to have a little context. After you, sir. Uh, Okay. Um, I'm Mike Stonebreaker. I'm on the faculty at MIT. Uh, I guess my main claim to fame is I won the Turing Award in 2014 for my contributions to databases. Uh, if you've used Postgres, that's I built that. If you use Vertica, I built the prototype that turned into that. Uh, if you use CyDB, ditto. Uh, and so I do databases, but uh, I've had a long interest in information discovery. I'm a huge fan of Google Maps. Uh, and as you probably all know, it's a drill down uh, pan and zoom paradigm where you can get from a picture of the world to a plot map on your home street in 11 or sorry, in 21 clicks. Uh, and so I had a long, long interest in information discovery since I do information. Fantastic. Absolutely. And because of all of that, Mike, I thought it would be a great bet to join you. So <laughs> I'm CEO of Hopara and have been so for, for about the uh, last year and really enjoying our journey. Uh, tell, us, tell me a little bit more about Hopara and kind of what you all focused on, the role you play in the space, that kind of thing. I, I'll take it. Sure. <laughs> so Hopara, and this is really part of part of Mike's journey is also the journey that brings us to Hopara. I mean, you heard Mike has created the databases that are they're used all over the world. Then he really got into the normalization of data. How do you make all these different databases work together? But now you have your data, you have it organized. How do you see it? How do you use it? How do you take this to the next level of a visualization to really utilize that data that you spent all this time getting together and organizing. That is what Hopara does. That's the solution now of taking what is what we think is an antiquated way of looking at your data and taking yep. it to a new level. Fantastic. So I, so I think, uh, yeah. So I think uh, I'd like to just tell a little vignette of about one of Hopara's customers. Okay. Uh, they are a, an a sensor, they build sensors. Uh, they are in the IoT space. Uh, they build vibration sensors that you put on machines. And uh, I didn't know uh, a while ago that you put a vibration sensor on a machine because uh, it starts to vibrate before it fails. And so that allows you to do uh, preventive stuff or order a new one in advance. So anyway, one of one of our customers is an IoT uh, vibration sensor company in Brazil, and they, of course, sell their sensors. And one of their customers is a very large uh, manufacturing company in Brazil, which has 58 factories across Brazil. And they have thousands of these vibration sensors. And uh, IBBX, of course, has a traditional dashboard where you can display uh, data about uh, what's happening with your sensors. You can have the average number of bad values. And they have a machine learning system that predicts when uh, a machine is going to fail if it's, if it's started sure. vibrating. And it's sort of a standard Tableau, Spotfire kind of uh, information visualization system. Mm -hmm. And this large customer, uh, the 58 factory guys in Brazil, they said, well, that's all really nice and we like that, but we don't get the big picture. We don't, you know, we can't see uh, what's happening in our 58 factories. Mm. So 
uh, IBBX partnered their traditional dashboard with our information discovery drill down system where you can start with a map of Brazil with 58 uh, dots on it representing the factories. They're color coded green, mm -hmm. red, or yellow. If there's one that's red, you can drill into it, see what's, get a picture of the factory, figure out where the sensors are that are, that are, that are um, out of, you know, out of bounds and drill into specific machines. And so it's a Google map style drill down system and you can, it's very much like Google Maps on steroids. You can use maps, you can use floor plans, you can use uh, canvases that represent other things, and you can drop any kind of data uh, on these canvases. And so it's a great information discovery system that complements a traditional dashboard. And so in our opinion, uh, the thing we'd like to convey to your readers is that they probably have the standard kind of traditional uh, dashboard right now, sure, sure. and they and they should augment it with a sophisticated information discovery system such as the mm -hmm. one that we have, because an eyeball uh, on a, on complicated data is an extremely valuable tool that complements sort of the standard presentations. Fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate that kind of context. Kind of puts it all full circle to understand exactly how you work with customers and kind of what they're doing. So, so that's great. Um, thank you for sharing that. What I wanted to do is um, I want to shift over to talking a little bit high level about data visualization in, in the IoT space. And if you could just kind of kick it off, um, either one of you ever wants to take it, just high level for somebody who doesn't really understand what digital or data visualization actually is. If you were to describe it in a very kind of quick, short, you know, high level way, how would you describe it to somebody? Well, I, uh, I'd like to distinguish visualization from information discovery and presentation. Mm -hmm. Visualization is about rendering teapots. Uh, and that's not what any of our, any of your readers or any of our customers do. Okay. Uh, they are drowning in real time data. Okay. Uh, in the IOT space, uh, there's a data deluge coming at you because your readers are in the process of sensor tagging everything of material significance to report their state or location in real time. Okay. So there's this tsunami that is drowning you mm. and you, you, uh, you either pass it to analysis systems, which produce you tables of numbers or, uh, and that's valuable in certain circumstances, or you pass it to an information discovery system mm. that can allow you to see the high level and then drill into your data. Gotcha. Uh, just for example, uh, a while ago, we had a prototype with a large uh, hospital uh, here in New England. And uh, as you may know, ho hospitals have a horrible time with infections. Uh, and uh, the on, on the average across the country, if you are a surgery uh, patient, there's a 1% chance you're gonna get a nasty infection. Okay. And if you start asking doctors, you know, where do these infections come from? They say, well, I don't know. Uh, they might come from uh, contaminated instruments. They might come from somebody being infected you, using, uh, you know, a specific machine and then it wasn't sufficiently cleaned and you used the same machine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, they have a record of every single patient at this particular hospital and where they were geographically in the hospital over time. That's a gigantic amount of information. Right. So they said, what we would like to see is render the infected patients on a floor plan of our hospital so that if we can drill into hotspot rooms, uh, we can maybe get some insight. So we did exactly that and we showed it to the uh, head of infection diseases at this hospital. Okay. They, they looked at it and said, wow, uh, the hot rooms are right across from the nurse's station. And so the nurses are clearly putting 
infected patients nearby so they can keep an eye on them. And that's an insight you would never get by looking at a mountain of data. Sure. So basically, uh, VIS systems are incredibly valuable when you don't know what you're looking for and you want insight. Mm-hmm. You know, your question is, tell me something interesting. Right. And if you know the question to ask, well, go ask it with your favorite query or analysis right. tool. Right. But as often as, ta- as not, you don't know. Right. And so that's where our product uh, excels is when uh, your, your query is, I'm drowning in data, tell me something interesting. Fantastic. Okay, great. And how would you, you know, for, for our audience who maybe is trying to understand exactly what this, the data visualization kind of landscape currently looks like, what, how would you kind of describe that? Like what is, how, how is, how has it been done? You know, how is the, the landscape kind of currently set up? Um, and, and what is kind of the, the approach to doing it, doing data visualization the right way or what's it thing should you be kind of thinking about? Okay. So, uh, first of all, I'd like you to distinguish two cases. One, one is, I mean, your readers all have, uh, you know, IOT data. So case number one is you have 10 sensors, uh, or you're tagging ducks, you know, in a marsh and, you don't really care about real time and you don't really care about scale. So if you have a small problem, the answer is do it any, any way you want to. Uh, but if you, have, if you want to do it at scale, then it becomes important to worry about, worry about your data and worry about how you're going to look at it. So uh, my interest is at scale. Okay. So at scale, the first thing you absolutely should do is put your data in a database. Okay. Because lots of people don't. And if you don't put your data in the, in the database, then chances are you lose all the semantics of what the data means. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite bugaboos is people who put all their data in files and then encode the metadata in the name of the file. So, uh, you know, a file name is recording XYZ 10, 11, uh, 12, 31. Uh, which means that you you know you have to parse you have to parse the file name to have any idea what the data means, and so if you put your data in a database system, it forces you to put the metadata there, and that just means that uh, downstream uh, systems will love you because they can read your data. So uh, and so at scale, uh, at scale, put your data in a database system. And then you've got to use a biz system that scales. So my favorite example is let's suppose you uh, want to look at the population of the United States. There's 330 million of us. And you want to put a dot uh, at the geographic location where everybody lives. Well, that will paint the screen black in downtown DC Mm -hmm. and will really paint the screen black you know, in New York City, in Manhattan. So you need a system that that will allow you to do drill down so that you don't just display the finest granularity uh, and just, it just paints the screen black. Okay. So in my opinion, a drill down system that supports real time and scales uh, is, the, is the key things that you need. As far as exactly how your data looks, uh, there's just an enormous number of personal preferences here. Uh, as say, I particularly ma- like looking at things uh, Google Maps style, but as say, Gantt or you may, may want to look at it differently. So you need a system that can uh, display your data in a wide variety of ways at scale in real time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the... Uh, that's a pretty rare kind of thing. Sure. Uh, so I think, you know, the, to me, the answer is decide whether you want to look at your data in real time. Okay. If, you don't, if you don't care that the, the display can be stale, uh, if you can read yesterday's data, it makes life really easy. Hmm. Uh, but my interest is pe- people, the, uh, the people and the people that own the, the uh, 58 factories in Brazil are not interested in yesterday's data. Sure, uh, totally agree. 
And so uh, in, real, in real time, you, you've got to have a flexible information system that will display the data the way the user wants to see it and, and work at scale with some sort of drill down capability. Okay. Yeah, in the current state, I think what we're used to is seeing pie charts, graphs, bar charts. Yep. We see it in all kinds of different things and, and they have their place. Uh, but they all look the same. We've been looking at the same thing for, for decades. Uh, right. But that is going to give you something that is not as valuable to the eye and the brain. There is certainly a place for it. You can always use it for lots of good things. We're looking at what comes after that. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic way to kind of put it. I like that. Um, what, what are some of the... Um... I guess common challenges that you come across when you when you work with organizations that are trying to um, kind of implement data visualization and do it the right way. Like, are there kind of common challenges that companies ha have, or that you come across more often than than, than others that um, you know maybe could be avoided if if they knew about it or kind of could prepare for it? I just I'd be curious to kind of hear kind of your experience on that front. You know, I hate to give you a circular answer, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm gonna. So okay. yeah, it's because same as what we were just talking about, people have become accustomed to something sure. and then they're presented to this, this new way of looking at things, yeah. um, a way where they can navigate their own way through, they can see things with greater insight, they can put things in context. I would say one of the greatest challenges is giving people the ability to visualize what they want to visualize. Mm. And that's almost the, uh, the, the, the greatest challenge of a limitless opportunity hmm. is applying it to how best suit oneself. Now, the way we, we work through that is we give more and more examples. Hey, try this, try this, try this. The other day uh, worked out really well. Um, a, uh, a customer was, was looking for solutions. We gave them three because sure. instead, yeah, that way they could, it, it was almost like a, it, it was like being a, a designer of, of art. It's like, well, try yeah. them. Which, which one of these do you gravitate towards? So it's really, if you have an unlimited number of, of, of layers and canvases and seeing things, it's really just helping people put those all together in a way that's most valuable to them. How often do they know what they want when you talk to them? Or is it usually, does it take you to kind of show what's possible before they really can align and understand what it is that they truly want versus what they maybe think they want, or maybe they don't know? Well, first, first of all, Biggest problem number one that we see all the time is messy data. Okay. Data and so data that has not been curated so that it, it makes sense. Uh, and so if you if you have if you have garbage in, the answer is you're going to get garbage out. <laughs> so the the first the first you know adage is, by goodness, clean up your data. Uh, and then the second adage is hardly anybody knows how they would like to look at their data. They said, I, I, I know I want to look at it, but I'm not sure how. And what Gant just said is, is the obvious answer. Uh, give them a palette of, of 10 things and say, you can do this, 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 or this. And they say, oh, that looks nice. Uh, show, me, show me that. And so you mock that up. And they say, oh, that's nice, nice, but I don't like this and change that over here. Mm -hmm. So it's basically very inter it's interactive design uh, with, with us helping the, the customer figure out exactly what he would like to see. Yeah, it's, it's the pain conversation. You know, right. what, what is your pain? We had yeah. a customer a month ago that we had lots of customers that would have six to a dozen devices in a room. Right. And now we're talking to a customer that has hundreds. So we actually had to work with them to how do you visualize that? And we came up with a new thing called proportional zoom, where okay. when, they, when they would, you know, the problem is like Mike uh, mentioned, painting the screen black, there were so many devices that they started to overlap, but we just came up with technology that will allow things to, to resize and separate. So you could go down into the individual device and not have that overlap and really understand what was going on in that room. Okay. So yeah, you start with a problem okay, I'm, I'm dealing with massive numbers in a single room. How do I visualize that in a way that's useful? So you start with the problem, then you find the solution through the visualization. 
Absolutely. That's fantastic. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you all, um, kind of at a high level standpoint, um, toward, as we kind of start to, to wrap up the conversation here, is what is what does the future look like in this space to you all? Like, what are you most excited about? What's what's happening that maybe our, our viewers and our readers are not aware of that they should be kind of paying more attention to the data visualization space um, and, and, at, and as connection to kind of the future of the IoT industry? I think the first, first thing is that uh, your readers are in the catbird seat because we're, we're, as a society, we're in the process of just sensor tagging everything of material significance. Uh, and these sensors are going to largely turn from passive to active, meaning we, okay. used, to put, we used to put stickers on things uh, and those stickers will, or will turn into active tags uh, so that you can find stuff in real time. And so I think the first thing that's going to happen is that that's going to give everybody a, a scale a scale problem because they're going to go from hundreds of sensors to millions of sensors. So I think that is that is coming in a big way. Uh, I think the other thing that's coming at us is that sensor technology is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, which is going to accelerate the the ad adoption of sensor tagging everything. Uh, beyond that, I think uh, cheap hardware is going to help a lot. Uh, right now, uh, most visualization systems are 2D because 3D is, is, is too expensive to, to be interesting to most people. But okay. I think 3D will get uh, cheaper and cheaper. And so we're looking forward to moving to 3D technology uh, because if you've ever been in, uh, let's say, uh, this, is a, this is a visualization professor at Brown, Andy Van Dam, who's now quite old, but 20 years ago, he had a thing he called the cave, which was you walked into a room and in uh, all sides, it was, you know, piles of displays. And so you could just look at uh, the amount of information you could look at by turning around was a couple orders of magnitude more than would fit on one screen. And so I think, uh, you know, immersive experiences will come over time. Uh, maybe uh, Mark Zuckerberg and his meta stuff will, will turn out to work. Uh, but I think there, uh, that's in the research phases and it will come to pass over time. So I think figuring out how you're going to, how you're going to deal with, uh, immersion technology and how you're going to go with 3d is sort of on the horizon. Yeah, sure. uh, sorry, go ahead again. I, don't know, I was also going to say, I think the, uh, the future with, with that tsunami of data, with all that coming at you. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're all in business and we all want to be successful individually and, and our companies. And when we're going to get into these projects, we do have to show return on investment. And I believe a really big part of that return on your investment is the usability, usability and understandability of the data. So there's more and more and more. How do you make that data more usable and understandable to a larger group? Because I think that is going to become a major metric for success. I completely agree. Um, I think making the data accessible and easily understood and by, you know, by that intended end user is really where the ROI comes in for a lot of these companies. Cause it's like, like, uh, uh, Mike, like you said earlier about kind of that garbage data in garbage data out type of thing, you solve that problem and you start to get good data coming out. It's mm -hmm. then how do you make it something that can be used? How can it be easily visualized, whether like it's 2d, 3d, but you know, we're going to be getting data from so many more sources, not just how do we process it all, but how do we, make presented in a way that's functional and usable and valuable to that person at the end of the day, that's going to be actually using that data, which, you know, they're that, that, that persona kind of varies quite greatly on who it is that's going to be interacting with data across different use cases, industries, you name it, and being able to solve that on, and focus on that for each particular use case is what I've seen from conversations in the past, the real key to, to the value here. Well, I think, uh, a lot of the prospects and customers we talk to are also Tableau users. 
Sure. And they, they hate the fact that Tableau is basically a programmer, programmer tool. Uh, it okay. is not an end user tool, at least not to most of the prospects we're talking to. And they really want something that is uh, end user programmable so that end users can tailor, tailor displays to what they really want to look at. Right. And we're working hard on, on making an, an end user accessible system. Uh, Cause I think that's, that's, that, that's what will drive the RO. I and mean, that's what will bring the software cost down uh, and, and deliver an attractive ROI. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been a fantastic conversation. I, I really appreciate both of you kind of taking the time. Um, for our audience who wants to potentially follow up on the on this conversation, learn more about the company, reach out, engage in any ca capacity, what's the best way that they can go ahead and do that? Hey, our website, popara.io. Okay. Uh, feel free. You and better spell that. <laughs> it'll be it'll be it'll be plastered everywhere with our promotion i promise they they'll, they'll know how to spell that one uh, by the time they see it it'll be on the title it'll be in the description and the write-ups everything uh so but but feel free to if you want to just say yeah, it out loud but you can always get me gant redman is uh g redman g r e d m o n yeah. at popara.io uh would love to be chatting uh find me on linkedin there's only two gant redmans it's me and my dad i'm the one that's not 85 <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a unique one coming you know i search for names sometimes on linkedin and it just is you know you gotta oh, really start, you gotta start putting in title or um company names and locations and just just to narrow it down um, but that's very convenient but 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 mike and gan thank you guys so much it's a pleasure speaking to both of you um and i really look forward to getting this out to our audience it's it's you know it's a topic that i think is very important to kind of talk further about and you two are obviously the experts in it so um i really appreciate you taking the time to share with our audience Thank you, Ryan. You're doing great work. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.